What happens when a company has got a mistreatment scandal that happens as the CEO leaves, only to be replaced with the old CEO, and then the old CEO almost immediately comes clean on Twitter about something not particularly savory that he did in the recent past at the company. That's today's story. So, Paradox, of course, they do many big games, Crusader Kings, Europa Universalis, all of that, and they were very recently in the news. Now, they were in the news because basically there was polling done of, I think it was around 150 of the 400 staff, and it found within that sample size, it was a 44% of people had basically experienced workplace mistreatment. And unfortunately, it was actually 69% of the sampled women. So women had a higher rate of you know bad workplace situations than men which i suppose given some of the other things we see in the industry is not particularly a surprise now this happened roughly when their ceo stepped down and it was basically citing you know sort of differences over strategy very much not about this in terms of what they were officially citing for it so now frederick wester who is the newly reinstated ceo is back and he almost immediately posted about regretting an incident of inappropriate behavior toward an employee during a company meeting in 2018. He took to Twitter to basically talk about this story. And, well, so he ended up limiting, I think he protected his, his Twitter account. Eurogamer did compile the things, though, so perhaps he got a lot of fac, uh, flack um, afterwards. Now, what's weird here is he doesn't say exactly what happened. Now, there are reasons why that wouldn't happen. Perhaps an ongoing investigation or a sort of situation where if he said exactly what happened, then maybe too many people, you know, people would immediately know who it's about and that could be troublesome for that employee, perhaps. So maybe HR issued that guidance. Hard exactly to say, but what we can do first is actually go through his tweets. So let's go through his account of things. In the wake... Of the recently leaked survey to the press, there have been rumors and discussions about my role in this environment. Of course, some of those issues will have been historical. People perhaps will have noted that he stepped down as CEO and was replaced, perhaps wondering if there was anything connected. And then also industry whisper networks. As an example, being a World of Warcraft person, yeah, I just hear a little bit more about the things swirling in and around that. So perhaps it's the case for friends and family of Paradox, for, you know, content creators, journalists, they were beginning to hear murmurs. So perhaps this is him getting ahead of any form of story. Or perhaps it is a more genuine good faith thing. So to continue, uh, citing a specific incident in 2018. In the name of transparency and clarity, I would like to shed light on this. Accountability starts from the top. It absolutely does, and uh, certainly this is a, a good statement to have came out, even though I do think it does leave some to be desired, and I think you'll see that as we go through it. In the beginning of 2018, we held a company-wide conference, and during this gathering, a Paradox employee was subject to inappropriate behavior from me personally. This was something I immediately and sincerely apologized for in person the following Monday in a process reviewed by HR. Everyone should have the right to be comfortable and safe, especially around a person in a position of power such as myself, something I stated then and I'm stating again now. It has never been my intention to make anyone uncomfortable around me, but that is still what happened, much to my regret. Following this episode, I've been working with my coach and mentor to understand the impact of my behavior better and to better myself. Contrary to what people may suggest, this had nothing to do with my, me resigning as CEO in 2018, something that had been planned for over six months at the time it occurred. Understand that this makes my cause less credible when it comes to handling these issues internally and will therefore not be involved directly with it. It will be done by HR at Paradox with external help, but of course, with my full support if needed. Again, I sincerely regret making a person in my proximity uncomfortable, and for the damage this caused, I will continue to work not only to improve myself, but uh, also to improve the work environment uh, around both Paradox and the industry as a whole. Now, Paradox ended up uh, basically declining 
to share further details about the story out of respect for the privacy of the person involved. So overall, there's a few different ways to take this. Um, and I have a feeling we'll be on the same page here because if there was just one more tweet that at least told us the nature and, you know, we maybe had uh, some evidence that would credibly say that you know, he's not done mistakes since or that he has genuinely been improving, then I would say this is a great statement. I would say that, yes, accountability does come from the top. I do agree with you. And surely if you're an employee at the company and you see the new CEO come in, publicly own up to mistakes and do so in a way where if those mistakes happen, he would be seen to be directly going against a very public statement that he made. So you know, one thing in a situation like this is, you know, you could say that this is him providing ammunition to people that they can fire back at him if he doesn't hold his word. So there is one side of me that thinks, well, that is the correct thing to do. That pretty much, you know, that is what leadership looks like. But then there's that side of me that just thinks, well, what was this? Did you make a comment about somebody's physical appearance? Is there a, you know, is there a sort of, you know, is there a, like a gender angle to this? Is this a position of power, a sort of, I mean, it probably it is a position of power thing, but you know, to what degree is it? Is this, you know, somebody was just late in a project and you chewed them out in front of a bunch of their colleagues, such that their authority, uh, maybe their sense of, you know, being valued at the organization was undermined. Um, I really do feel that he should have shared a little bit more. I understand not wanting to do this in a way that could cause any, you know, uh, lack of comfort or whatever to the person who was involved here. But I do think that this was basically the correct, like, way, this was the correct way to go about it in broad strokes, but perhaps the execution of it left a little bit to be desired. Perhaps that's why things have unfolded the way they have, and certainly limiting who can see the tweets. Not an ideal follow-up. Even if you are taking a bunch of shit, if you are sort of there as the CEO, I think you need to be seen to weather those punches. You need to be seen to do that. Um, and you don't like you're not running away from something. Now, you know, there's a few ways to, to read it. I suppose that's basically where I'm where I'm coming at this. Like in my head, it's like, oh, good on you for owning up to your mistakes. But then I'm also just like, well, where are the specifics? And you know, to the you know, employees at Paradox, is there anything, you know, or do you get, you know, do, do they feel okay with this? And on that, there's one final thing before I hand it over just to see what your take is. I have not got back to them yet. Um, it's been completely stacked, but after our previous coverage of this, um, you know, an individual did reach out. So I think we'll, we'll have to, you know, we'll have to follow up there because, um, you know, it would be unfortunate to take this statement and go very hard in either direction and then, you know, just be in a situation of reacting purely to tweets and being very, you know, authoritative in our angle on that, even though it would be possible to gather some further information that could perhaps help us actually work through this. So what's your reaction? Uh, first thing first is that he actually does no longer protect his Twitter account. So they are all there. Oh, good. To see. So that's, that's at least a good step. But I'm, I'm largely in agreement. I would definitely uh, kind of lean across the angle of, okay, I see what you're doing. There's no, like, <laughs> there's no way to look at this as a negative that doesn't feel to me, you know, uh, kind of not allowing someone a second chance or not allowing a kind of, or end up being a little bit too cynical. That's kind of how I feel about it, where, you know, <laughs> doing this in a half-assed way fe feels like it would be a waste. So I feel like this is a genuine attempt. And all mm -hmm. fronts to go, listen, we are going to try to improve. I'm back in this role. I'm going to I'm gonna say I, I apologize for this. I was part of it, but now we're going to solve it. So, I mean, I think, you know, there's not, there's not really too much more to, uh, to do from his perspective that can actually help immediately. Mm -hmm. Outside of, listen, I was involved. I'm sorry. I'm working in these specific ways personally. I'm going to be hands off, but as a CEO, I support the entire initiative. So it's kind of, it's a thing where... Generally, this is kind of about as good a step forward as you could make without, you know, incriminating uh, or giving specific stuff, which would have helped for understanding. But, you know, yeah, I guess he maybe didn't want to didn't want to uh, highlight the specifics for for, I imagine, just a general public or like a PR reason. Yeah, yeah. To it's an extent. So that that's definitely something to consider why they didn't do that. 
But generally speaking, it's like, this seems all okay. Except the one thing that I will point out that kind of, um, kind of tickled me the wrong way, I think, is saying, you know, this is something I immediately and sincere sincerely apologize for in person the following Monday in a process reviewed by HR. If solving these problems via HR was something that was standard in 2018, then how have all these problems existed and stood out? So it's the kind of case, is it, is, it, think. is it just he stepped up, but he was still there and all the other stuff was still happening mm. when he was there, so... Yeah, it's, it's challenging because it's one of those things where, like, everyone loves a redemption story. And yeah. a little part of that is, and this is something I do think, there needs to be a path to people, you know, listening, changing their behavior, and, you know, being commended for making the right steps and for no longer, you know, causing those problems. And, yeah, sure, it would be a lot more ideal if people were just getting it right from the start. But I think... We need to have a world where there is a pathway to, uh, to, to redemption. And some of what I'd even think about there is if you compare some of the, um, oh, what's the word? Whenever somebody is in prison and then they recommit afterwards. Oh, um, I, I forget exactly, but yeah. my point anyway was that uh, it's like the, the prison system in some countries like Sweden is a lot more geared around rehabilitating people and uh you know obviously there is an aspect of punishment because in many cases people have you know done bad shit and there should be a punishment there but in terms of balance they're also thinking well what happens if you know this person is not rehabilitated they're going to go either they're going to go back into the community damage the lives of more people and then end up back at us for even longer meaning we've got to spend even more vast quantities of money uh, you know, keeping these people in prison because it costs a lot of fucking money to have somebody in prison. So it seems to me it's it's a little bit like that. If you have, you know, a system of resolving problems that's very much, you know, positively oriented, that is around rehabilitating people, uh, you know, teaching them the right behaviors, holding to them, the, holding them to that, having good systems for accountability and, you know, rewarding people actually doing the right thing and, uh, you know, going back out and being better for their community, it from what I understand anyway, the levels of people like redoing a crime are lower in some of those Nordic pr prison systems than they are in some of the more punitive, uh, more punishment-oriented prison systems, uh, perhaps like those found in the UK and the US. Um, now, that is certainly a thing where I've taken a cursory glance at that you know, seen a few uh, YouTube documentaries and things like that on either side, but certainly it seems like a principle that stands to reason. And it's always that thing of, as humans, you know, we have this very innate desire for vengeance <laughs> in many cases, right? You know, when somebody does something wrong, you, you, you know, often people are like, well, we want, them, we want you to fucking burn for, for doing that terrible thing. Um, but then it's like, well, if all that really causes is a higher level of people redoing their crime or, you know, their, their bad act that causes more problems and perhaps in like a criminal justice system puts them back into prisons, therefore costing taxpayers even more money. Well, we have to do what is, and I, <laughs> people took the piss out of me for the amount of times I've said pragmatic recently, but we have to do what's pragmatic and what actually works based on evidence. And I guess I would say that a situation where uh, this Frederick Wester guy can... Now, I, I would say, like, look, if he did something super, super bad, and, you know, especially if it's of, like, a sexual nature or something, then there is more of a case for, like, all right, look, you really shouldn't be back as, as CEO. or really, let's, you know, be in those big positions of, of power because, come on, how can an employee really trust? But assuming that this is a more routine workplace you know absolutely a workplace incident but you know a more uh routine one than perhaps one that could potentially be uh of, of a criminal nature because obviously you know sexually harassing people like yeah it's not a thing <laughs> it's not a thing to be doing um then there should be a path where this is a guy who can make some mistakes genuinely repent for those and you know, try to try to work to affect some change. In the same way that you know, you always see those stories of people who maybe they fell into into gangs or into drugs or you know into things like that. They end up doing their time in prison. They come out the other side and they decide, well, okay, I'm now going to work with the community and try to you know help people not repeat my mistakes. 
there, you know, that, that's something, it's like an aspirational story. It's something that I think thematically many humans are like, well, that is, that is what you want to see. So I think that's why we, you know, we need to not, you know, just completely like shut people out as soon as there is one offense, but that, and, you know, will sort of depend, you know, on the magnitude of, of, of the offense, if it's being repeated, if there is a pattern of, you know, repeating that behavior after it's been acknowledged and, you know, people have said, okay, I'll change, I'll change, honest. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically the situation. Yeah, the, the difficult part of that I find is the accountability over time. Yeah. Because a lot of this stuff actually happens as part of the news cycle. Mm -hmm. So it'll explode over this and it kind of reminds me of what happened with Riot. Where there's been, you know, Riot exploded over the sexual harassment cases and everyone was absolutely nailing them constantly. But as soon as the like story died down, there's been like, I haven't seen a follow-up talked about since I think there was a follow up a year later, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen any other uh, talk about it whatsoever. It's kind of the same thing with Activision Blizzard, where you know you can trust people or you can trust an organization to you know undergo reform, solve all the problems they need to, be better on the other side. But that requires accountability. That requires a repeated look, and it's kind of on, especially in the games industry, it's kind of on the consumers and the industry itself to kind of keep an eye on these things and try them again and again. Yeah. But it's difficult for them to actually do that because, you know, <laughs> you, would, you would need people employed to do this. So it's kind of, it's one of the things where I'd, I hope that a lot of the, like, games journalists in the current market, in the current way things are going, will take that upon themselves to do a follow-up in the next six months, in the next year, keep in touch with people at Paradox to, you know, hey, has Wester got up to anything mm -hmm. in the past, like, in, since he came back? So that's that kind of thing where we need to just sort of as a as a collective, keep an eye on all this stuff and make sure no one's yeah, stepping too yeah. far out of lines. But and that, I mean, that's <laughs> why it's good that his statement. It's like if he goes if he goes back in that statement, yeah. employees will be like, "Well, that was a lie," mm. and then they will uh, hopefully go to the press, and then we'll find out. It's an extension. Uh, it was a slightly different flavor of the same story we've seen everywhere else, mm. where I think this is the first person who's actually came back to a place and actually, you know apologized but still ended up in a, in a position of power but at least this one's you know uh an actual proper i literally did something wrong because you look at the activation blizzard no one who's still there has engaged in wrongdoing that is like public knowledge yeah and Every, actually like, <laughs> i imagine that if this was something super serious yeah like you know going on to like you know sort of sexual angle he wouldn't be ceo surely surely he wouldn't be ceo if that was a known about thing that he can then go and tweet about Exactly. Which, that's, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's why I don't put too much stock in the kind of, oh, he's hiding what he actually did kind of thing. Because all of the language, I mean, this is literally just a, just a vibe I get from the language, which is extremely subjective. But it seems to me like he, especially, like the language is very full of shame, as far as I can see it. Mm. And obviously, as a CEO, he's probably smart enough to speak how he wants to speak and get across the point he wants to make. But it reads to me like he is genuinely ashamed of it. And like the action itself, he didn't want to go into detail because it, you know, if I had to guess, I would say he was likely, you know, a little bit inappropriate and maybe a little bit forward on someone. And then maybe maybe even after a drink or two and then was apologizing afterwards. Well, was that a work? Like, was that a work meeting? So, like, I think about what, what you know, what happens in the context of a work, uh, you know, of, of a work meeting, right? Um, and it was like a company-wide conference. Mm. So that's the sort of thing. Is that, you know, a conference as in... I don't know if it's called Paradox Con, but, you know, is or is that like, you know, some sort of we're doing a gathering of our team and, you know, it's going to be a little bit celebratory, you know, a little bit of a party or something? Or is this like, oh, yeah, it's a big comp company-wide conference, you know, can't fit it in the conference room, so it's more of an all-hands meeting? We don't exactly know. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. I think that's basically where to leave this story. And uh, yeah, we, we'll see if we can follow up um, as well. And uh, yeah, again, like if you're in and around Paradox, um, let us know. Hopefully this all turns out the best for, um, you know, for the staff. And ultimately what is best for the staff is also best for the customers. Because if people are in a shitty situation, it's going to make their whole life worse. And that's obviously... You know, it's, it's a complete lose-lose. And we don't want lose-loses to be going on. So that's it. Uh, that's it for us. Let us know what you think. Catch you next time.